what we have here is a 1968 Mustang that me and my brother David restored, or in the process of restoring. Um, a lot of people see an old car, it's rusty, it doesn't run, the brakes don't work, and they're intimidated by it. They'd rather go out and spend a couple thousand on a piece of crap import, or, you know, worse yet, some 80s American piece of crap. Not the way to go. What we did with this car is we bought some wheels, very initiated. And we went bare bones basic. Went to a junkyard, got a Ford Explorer rear end. Some people might say they don't work, but they work and they work beautifully. All you need to do is weld in the proper perches to mount it in. And it's a stronger rear end than you would buy for two or three thousand dollars. Thirty-one spline axles, it comes with posi, and all you need to do is look for tags. You get three seventy-three gears or four elevens. Don't scrap a rear end out of an old Mustang, they're pieces of crap. Get one out of a Ford Explorer. They're well worth the money. They're only $135. And it gives you disc brakes in the back, posi, and a steep gear ratio for better acceleration. So we got rid of the four bolt rear end, because this is a six cylinder Mustang, it still is as you can see. And for the front, I recommend going with the four piston 67 Mustang disc brakes. Factory stock, that way when you need pads, you go to the AutoZone, you go to O'Reilly's, you go ahead and get yourself some pads on the cheap. You're not looking for pads from some crazy company that made disc brakes for this car and then you can't get parts. Factory rotors, factory pads, that's the key. Again, the back, the factory explorer rotors and factory explorer pads. They're huge brakes. Not like massive, obviously. You're not going to road race on this thing, but they're 11 inch rotors front and back. And you have a factory parking brake assembly in the back out of the Ford Explorer, which hooks up to the parking assembly on a Mustang. Again, those are things you can't get with an aftermarket kit. What we're doing here today is because it's four-wheel disc brake, I went ahead and changed out the factory four-wheel drum, master cylinder, with the disc, disc, master cylinder, and a proportion valve. I'm putting in the last tube here, and in a minute here, I'll show you how to bleed the brake system to make your four-wheel disc brakes worse. I bought this car for $1,000 because it didn't run. I'll explain to you later in a different tutorial how to get a car running that hadn't run in about 20, 30 years. There's a step-by-step -step process you can go, and it saves you a lot of frustration and a lot of time. But, right now we're concentrating on the brakes. I installed the front brakes this summer, and we installed the rear end. We hooked up all the brake lines. There's an adapter that you need, you can get from Napa, or any other place that sells brake hardware adapters. It's a little brass fitting, it's like $2. You can make factory hard lines, if they're in good condition, work with the factory brake hook brake hose for a 60 or for a 95 and up explorer and it bolts right on and again you're going to need the same adapter depending on what distribution block you use it's a different adapter but it's the same company that makes them to hook up the factory hard line to the back of the port um, if you want if your hard, if your hard lines are not in good shape you can get go to Napa and buy the soft bed lines you can bend with your hand all the original curves you don't need a tube bender or nothing and you'll be in good shape. That's if your factory hard lines aren't any good. If they're good shape, you can go ahead and reuse them. And as you can see with this one, the factory lines work with this distribution block. And I'm going to go ahead and put this connecting line in right now. You have to bend the lines a little bit to work because the guys that sell you this stuff, they don't fit it at all. It looks neat in a little box, but it won't fit any of your factory lines or anything. You have to bend them a little bit. So make sure not to crimp your tubes when you're doing it. Because you squeeze them and you bend them and you get little pinholes, you lose brake pressure, that's obviously no good. Now it's hand tight, but you can see 
I got the new master cylinder. I got a distribution block. I got the two front factory lines hooked up to the front wheels. And I got the one factory line going all the way to the back hooked up using factory components. If I need, if I break down in Wyoming on this thing, I can go ahead, get new pads, do whatever I need to do because everything is factory. None of it is aftermarket aside from the brake booster, or the brake uh, master cylinder. I'm not using a booster. I think they're for pansies that like soft brakes. I don't like that. There's nothing wrong with four wheel brakes and no booster. But if your left foot's hard enough to work the clutch, your right foot can be hard enough to work the manual brakes. They stop a car just fine. This car weighs a lot less than most modern cars. What we have here is I'm replacing the old cracked rubber hoses with the stainless braided uh, brake hoses. Again, these are factory replacements. They're just a little better than factory. I got them from a man, discrakeswap.com. I don't know the guy's name, but he has the best prices for the best stuff. Don't buy discrake swaps for 64 through 70 Mustangs from anybody else. And he didn't give me a discount, just so you know. I straight up love his parts. Um, with brake hoses, they're old and they're made of brass. And you can't get a full wrench around them. They're only, they're only, the open end of the wrench is the only thing that works on them. And they won't come done. The best way to do them is to buy a little, small, vice grip. Clamp it down. I know it messes with the nut, but these aren't exactly new cars we're dealing with. It's either destroyed the nut, attempting to get it off, or get it off and mar the nut a little bit, which I'm willing to... There you go. You get it on nice and tight. You mark the nut up, but you get to reuse the hard line if it's in good shape. And you just apply pressure until it breaks free, and then you go ahead and use the wrench. That's the sound of it breaking free. Once it's free, the reason it's so tight is because it's brass. It deforms to stop any leaks when it's on tight, which is a good thing. But after sitting there for many years and the metal piece that it goes into rusts and expands, it won't break free except with this trick. But you have to get it on tight. Sometimes I have it on so tight that I use another plier to squeeze the handles. It's the only way to get off old brake hoses. Otherwise, you just destroy them in the process. Now I can use my wrench and undo the brake hose, it comes right off. Again, what you're seeing is a rusty old Mustang. Uh, we're not rich. I drive my cars. But we're just explaining for the poor people how to keep the hobby going. Those of us who don't have lifts and, you know, the rest of the stuff. Remove this clip. 40 years old, but it's in good shape, and take off the old, cracked rubber hose. Take your new hose, take the copper washer, slip it on this end. The copper washer is soft. It deforms, and it keeps the fluid from leaking. And you screw your new hose in. This is important, because this doesn't swivel. You screw in this end first, and then you screw in the hard line to this end. If you screw it in the other way, what you're going to get is you're going to twist the line or twist the hose while you're trying to screw on, screw it to the caliper. So you have to do the caliper side first. Now in a minute, we'll be bleeding this brake system, making sure everything works. We put on the, uh, the bearings and the rotors a while back. So there's a little bit of surface rust on them, but again, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just surface rust. Tighten it down. And then you take the 5 8 key and you lock it snug. Make sure it deforms the copper and locks it, seals it tight. Then, and only then, the move the line around, flip it through the thing, Line it up, there's going to be a hex sized hole in there so that when you slip it through the hole, the uh, it'll lock the nut in place so that when you're tightening the hard line, it won't slip. And you use a 716 
You don't, you only use the vice grip once to break it free and only to break it free. If you start with the vice grip, you'll save your nut. If you start with anything else, you start using these or something, you'll chew the nut up and it will look like crap and you won't be able to use a wrench. But if you use the vice grip just once to break it free, then you can use your wrench and your nut will be fine. It'll be, it'll be marked up. But I mean, how often do you train, do you change brake hoses? It'll be another 10 years before we change the brake hose, and by then my hard line's not going to be in the kind of shape it is in now. So I'll be changing that too. Anyways, we installed the brake hoses, we installed all the lines, and we did a pre preliminary bleed of the brake system. We started at the front. Uh, these two hoses right here, you're going to have to undo and bleed the system real quick. And half your little brother or somebody pump the brake pedal like a million times, you'll see a bunch of bubbles come up. Once fluid comes out of these hoses, you go ahead and tighten them. Lock them down to make sure nothing bleeds. And then you go around, and it's a dual system. So the front and the rear is entirely different. Some people tell you start at the farthest end. This may be true with like a smaller vehicle, like an old bug or something. But doesn't work with a bigger system like that. With there's so much air in the system, it's not compressing it, and it won't bleed. So you can start with the nearer one, the front. Like the front's its own system, the back's its own system. You start with the front left, which is right there. You bleed it until bubbles come out of here, and it's just fluid. And then you bleed the front right. And we're going to do so now. We already bled it, but we're going to bleed it again to get rid of any last bubbles. And it's easy. You get somebody to hold the pedal, and you open and close the little nipple. When you're installing calipers, make sure the bleed nipple is at the highest point because bubbles gather at the top. If you have the bleed nipples at the bottom, as if you have to reverse left and right like we just did a couple minutes ago, what you're going to do is you're going to bleed it all day, but the bubbles are going to stay at the top and your brakes are always going to be soggy. That's no good. So, okay, when I say go, you press and hold. Press the prank and hold it while you open the bleed nipple, let out all the air bubbles.